Welcome to my video update on the development progress for the Steam VR simulation of the 1851 Great Exhibition. We start just inside the western entrance of the Crystal Palace with this huge piece of glass, 10 foot wide by 18 foot tall, exhibited by the Thames Plate Glass Company. It was reported that it took four attempts to manufacture a sheet of this size, the first three breaking during manufacture. Moving outside we come to the cheese ring column we first met in video number 33. Next to this we have added the display area for Brown Lennox and Company, manufacturers of anchors and chains. Exhibited are samples of the smallest and largest anchors supplied to the Royal Navy. Behind the anchors we see a set of level crossing gates. Level crossings started to appear as soon as the railways did in the 1830s. From 1839 the gating of level crossings was mandatory. Initially it was the roadway which was normally closed, opened on demand when road traffic demanded, and it was safe to do so. From 1842 this started to change to the roadway being normally open, a change which accelerated as road traffic increased. Moving back inside the building, we have added a few more stands on the southern side of the nave. Here we see Salas Schwab and Company of Manchester. The stand displayed printed cotton calicos and muslins. They were awarded a prize medal. The other side of the same stand was shared by Hargreaves Brothers and Company of Manchester and Lediard and Company of London. Their catalogue entry lists 62 different printed material designs, sadly with no illustrations. Moving east we come to this stand shared by several smaller companies from Barnsley which displayed bedding, towels, table linen, stair carpets, horse bandages and cheese strainers. The companies which shared this stand were Carter Brothers, Joseph Cantor, Jackson and Matthewman, Henry T. Fletcher, Hattersley Parkinson and Company, Piggott and Newton, and Hanworth and Carnley. Finally for this update, we return to the theme of railways. Here is a railway signal post by J. F. Boak of Wellington Quay, Dublin, as used by the Great Southern and Western Railway Company of Ireland. It superseded a previous design which required two lamps, whereas this design uses a single lamp, in front of which either red or green glass is aligned. Note this would have used an oil lamp. Watch out for my next video, which will continue to add to the contents of the exhibition.